Hello world, it's Siraj and I reversed my age 7.6 years in 11 months and I've got the data to prove it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the same for free. And what you can see here is my dashboard on Inside Tracker. What I've done is I've taken periodic blood tests every three months, and then what Inside Tracker does is they measure my biological age. This is a different number than my chronological age. You can see under the breakdown that all of these different blood markers like calcium and albumin levels are measured, and it tells me how each of them is either giving me time or reversing time. So for example, calcium is aging me 1.3 years. And why is that? Well, because compared to other users of a similar age, their calcium numbers are much higher than mine. So I need to increase my calcium levels to reverse my age further. So there's an action plan for me, but this is not the only service we could use. We could use plenty of other services. If you do have the money, you can use one of these services and give them a urine test or a blood test or a saliva test some sort of bodily fluid, and then they're gonna measure your biological age. And this is a different number from your chronological age because we have all these organs in our body, 70 plus organs, each of them has a biological age. And this is affected by our lifestyle, our diet, exercise, and sleep. And we can either slow it down or increase the rate of aging by our lifestyle. Like if we smoke, if we're too fat, if we don't eat right, if we don't sleep well, things like that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build an age prediction model without machine learning, super simple. Bruh. Then we're gonna improve it so that it does use machine learning so it gets better. And then in the last version, V3, we're gonna improve it even more using cutting edge deep learning and a very cutting edge clock called the Duned in Pace Clock. And I'll explain what that is at the end of the video, but it just came out this year. So let's start with the first version of this using Bing. I wanna show a beginner a simple example that doesn't involve machine learning, no machine learning at all. It, it should use a static formula, that means a formula that does not change, that's able to make predictions about my biological age given a set of predefined coefficients and my, let's say, height, weight, and smoking status. That's it, those are the three variables that it's going to ask me for. And the coefficients are numbers that researchers found in previous lab tests. When you plug them into this equation, it's gonna give you an accurate prediction based on their trials of their data on their patients. So already it's gonna give us a simple code sample in Python of using three parameters, height, weight, and smoking status to a function called biological age with these coefficients. We can see under the comment section here that this formula is called the Harris-Benedict equation to calculate the basal metabolic rate. All that is, is it's a simple equation that takes static variables that we give it, and then it very roughly estimates our biological age. So let's give it that. Let's ask it to compute using the Python that it gave us. Okay, so my height is six foot one. I'm using American, but it'll convert hopefully. Six foot one. My weight is 165 pounds, and my uh, smoking status is never. What's my biological age? use that formula. And it's, you can see that first it's gonna convert it to the metric system, and then it's gonna say my biological age is 28.4 years old. Okay, great, very cool stuff. But, so that we just did this for free, right? But it's not good enough because what happens with predicting biological age or anything in biology I'm learning is the more data you give it, the better the prediction is going to be. So it's not an either or, it's and when it comes to adding data to it. So right now we've just given it some simple lifestyle uh, data. We didn't need to take any tests for this. We just knew it, but let's improve this now. So show me an end to end. And what end to end means is it's a simple deep learning model that is a single one, not multiple implementation of a clock. And we're gonna call it a blood clock or another word for blood is hematologic clock uh, in PyTorch, which is a deep learning library in Python on GitHub. So we wanna see a deep learning library that's trained on some sort of publicly available blood test data set that's able to predict the a biological age using blood test data. And now blood tests can be free. You have to go to a community clinic or some research trial, maybe some university is gathering this data. So you can see that it's already giving me this aging clock. It's pulling this very new GitHub example that we can look at right here on GitHub. It's called the aging clock. It is two years old. And what we can do is we can open up an all new Google Colab and run this code in there. 
immediately you can see that it's asking us for these variables like our height, weight, sex, smoking status, and then it's gonna use those as predictors. This was trained on a data set of anonymized patients blood test data, tens of thousands of blood test data conducted by the US government. And this is a very recent data set, so this is good. The more recent, the better for us. We can see all of these different biomarkers that it's gonna ask us for, and we can give it a few, like our albumin levels, our glucose levels, our cholesterol levels, and we're moving into a world at the intersection of AI and biology where knowing your blood marker levels are like knowing your ABCs. You've got to know them, so memorize them. We've got sodium levels, we've got triglycerides, we've got HDL cholesterol, these are our heart health, our liver health, all of these markers of, markers of all of our organs. Um, we can input it into this model. And when we hit submit, it's gonna give us, again, our biological age for free. This is a more accurate representation than just those three initial features that we gave it, our height, weight, and smoking status. So that's cool. And let's take a look at this data, by the way. What does this data look like? If we go into the GitHub repository, we can see the data that it's trained on. All of these blood marker levels, it's all normalized across very similar scale scales. And it's a simple supervised learning problem where you've got the age as the output and the input are n number of biomarkers. So write me a list of every single, what's that hot word that I keep hearing, epigenetic clock? Write me a list of every single epigenetic clock you can find ranked by accuracy. And what we wanna do is we wanna use the most accurate epigenetic clock. This is a science that was invented in around 2013 by Dr. Steve Horvath at UCLA, where he found that if you took a genome, that's someone's DNA, and you look for specific changes at specific sites on that genome that were associated with lifestyle changes like smoking or not eating healthy, these are called gene expression levels that change based on your lifestyle you could predict someone's biological age. And he called that the Horvath clock. And you could see that right here. But there are other clocks that you can see here too, like Hanum's clock, Pheno age, Grim age. And what all of these clocks do is they measure different levels of what are called DNA methylation. What is methylation? It is a process where sugars are attached to different sites on a genome. These are called CPG sites. How do I know this? I memorize this using Bing. What does CPG stand for? Uh, cytosine, phosphorus, guanine. Why? That's just how biology works, I don't know. But the point of all of this is that if we can measure what's called DNA methylation, we can improve the accuracy of our biological age predictor. And right now, this is kind of expensive to do. The most accurate one is called the Dune in Pace Aging Clock, and we just don't have that data. But what we can do is we can ask it for what it, what it does have. So show me a, and this is the last prompt that we're gonna give it, show me a GitHub repository that analyzes methylation levels in the genome of blood cells to predict someone's biological age using deep learning. And hopefully this gives us a really modern repository. And why am I asking for GitHub repositories directly instead of data? Because it's actually easier to find pre-processed data on GitHub than it is to find raw data sets in general on the, all these government websites because they're super complicated. They ask for a bunch of uh, approvals. If you're a researcher, if you're a part of a lab, um, and I believe in open science for everybody. So I don't, we need to have more open source data. And luckily GitHub has that indexed very well inside of these repositories. So we could see a few different examples of using epigenetic clocks like Horvath's, the original clock, to compute the age of someone given all of their CPG sites, all of their DNA methylation levels. And we're gonna go to one of these GitHub repositories right here that it gives us, and we'll run it in a single Google Colab. And look under the data set here, you see, a person's age, that's the output, and then the input are all of these very, all of these features that start with CG and then some number. These are CG, CPG levels, that's methylation levels. So it's on a scale of zero to one, where the amount of lifestyle changes that you're doing will affect your methylation. We can see that if we run this code on an existing data set of six patients, it's going to give us a prediction. Now, with more patient data, we can improve this prediction. We can give it our methylation data if we have it, and it's going to make a prediction. In general, what I do is for my diet, I eat a, generally a Mediterranean diet. Uh, I fast 16-8, I eat olive oil, I don't eat too much. Uh, it's nothing crazy, it's not the best way out there. It's all gonna depend on your body. Uh, for sleep, I use the Aura sleep tracking ring. I try to you know, wear a 
eye mask at night. I try not to look at too many screens at night. And for exercise, I try to exercise every day. There is no right way to reverse your age. It all depends on your data, and that is specific to you. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please subscribe, hit the like button, comment uh, what you thought of this video. I wanna get the conversation going. And for now, I've gotta keep reversing my age. So thanks for watching.